the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. The Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Time to ride And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Great Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Great Nuts Flakes, buckaroos. They're great. And now, we've got a western yarn that kept our spines tingling when it happened. Still blackness just before dawn, a lone rider sits his night horse and lopes gently around the resting walking our cattle herd. Suddenly the horse pricks his ears, halts briefly, then breaks into a canter. What is it, Rambler? You smell trouble? I declare I don't know what I'd do without you, horse. No, oh, I see it now, a flashlight. Whoa, Rambler. Hey, you there. Don't move, I've got you covered. We don't hold with trespassers at four o'clock in the morning on the walking hour. I only come to see if I could help you. Allison. George Allison. I told you six months ago to stay off this spread. Well, you're short-handed, ain't you? I thought maybe I could catch on with you again for the drive, at least. Forget it. What are you doing with that flashlight? There's nothing particularly interesting about this herd, is there? Well, I was very fond of one of these steers. Thought maybe you might like to sell them to me. I don't know what your game is, Allison, but I know you hate cattle. Now get off this spread before I chase you off. All right, Boyle, you ask for it. You're going to get it. No, Allison, don't. You're an old man, Boyle. Can't even begin to cause me any trouble. Now we'll see how you like a pistol weapon. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That'll teach you to interfere with me, Boyle. There's a particular steer in this bunch that I just got to find. you're up. You've got to help me. It's Daddy. Oh, Karen, take it easy there, girl. Now come in and calm down and tell me what's wrong. Can you ride for the walk in our right now, Roy? Daddy's there alone and he's hurt badly. Well, sure I can, Karen, but what's this all about? I don't know. We were going to drive the cattle to the shipping station tomorrow and Dad was watching the herd tonight. And when I came up to spell him about an hour ago, I found him lying on the ground. Mm. He'd been pistol whipped, Roy. He was so far gone he couldn't tell me who did it. Well, where is he now? I got him into the house. All he could say was, get Roy Rogers. He'll know what to do. All right, Karen. I'll saddle Trigger and head for the walking hour right now. Oh, Pat. Pat, come in here. <laughs> the cereal's on the table and the cream's in the pitcher and we'll be ready to eat in just a... <laughs> Why, Karen Boyle, what's wrong? There's trouble at the walking hour, Pat. I want you to take Karen into Mineral City and tell Dale to take care of her. Oh, why, sure. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if Nellie Bell's awake yet, but she'll be raring to go the minute I step on her starter. What's up, Roy? I don't know, but Trigger and I are riding to find out. You come along to the walk on our as soon as you see that Karen's comfortable with Dale. Well, you shouldn't be up, Mr. Boyle. You had a bad knocking around. Oh, I'm all right, Roy. I've got to get the cattle started today. If I miss the shipment, Karen won't have a lot of things I planned for. Hmm? You're starting your drive pretty late. Yeah, I know it, Roy. I've been having so much trouble with the hands. Seems like as soon as I hire a man, Harold Lambert hires him away from me. Well, Pat and I'll make the drive for you. 
And we'll catch up with Allison, too. The important thing is to get these cattle started to market. Hey, wait a minute. What is it, Roy? Here's a single set of steer prints and horses' hoofs leading away from the main herd. Are you well enough to follow them with me? Yeah, I'm all right, Roy. Come on, Trigger. Up there, Freddy. Hey, lead down behind those rocks. Maybe we'll find what Allison was up to. Woo hoop, woo trigger, woo boy. Woo. Hey, this is strange, Mr. Boyle. Yeah, the rider and the steer stopped here. Why, look, Roy. The steer's prints head back toward the herd, and the hoof marks go off in another direction. Looks like Allison brought a steer here for some reason or other, then turned him loose. Just why did you fire Allison, Mr. Boyle? Well, to start with, he was a bad hand and a troublemaker. But the main thing was that I'm almost sure he was mixed up in the big diamond robbery. I don't have any proof, understand. But Allison was gone for two days just at that time. When he came back, well, he acted wrong somehow. Of course, that isn't very much evidence, Mr. Boyle, but sometimes hunches are right. Off your horse and hit the dirt, Rogers. Someone's cannoning us. Trigger, get around that rock. Go with him, Freddy. Whoever's shooting can't see us down here now. Only trouble is we can't see him either. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Boyle. Nobody's shooting at us. What? Hey, Roy! Roy! Where are you? Easy there, Nellie Bell. Over here, Pat. What in the world's the matter with Nellie Bell? Oh, there, Nellie Bell. Oh, poor old Nellie Bell must have the asthma. She's been coughing like this for the last five miles. Maybe it's just nerves. We thought an army was after us. Where's Karen, Pat? Is she all right? Oh, why, sure. She's fine, Mr. Boyle. I brought her down to Dale, and that gal could calm anyone down. They'll be along any minute now. What? Well, Karen should stay in town and rest. No, she figured we could use some help on the drive, so Dale told her she'd come along, too. We aren't getting the drive started this way. Let's go back and get the herd moving. Here, Trigger. Come here, boy. I'd still like to know what Allison is up to. Don't worry about it, Mr. Boyle. We'll cut out 200 head, and I'll guarantee to get them to the yard safely. Come along, Pat. You bet. And try to keep that mechanical monster of yours from backfiring. Boyle's heard skittish enough already. Oh, Nellie Bell's fine now. There come a couple of riders past the herd, Roy. They're digging leather hard. Well, that's Karen and Dale. You can spot that buttermilk horse of Dale's a mile away. Hey, they got here quick, and them gals is riding like it's important. Oh, oh buttermilk. Why aren't you in bed? You shouldn't be out here. I'm feeling better, Karen. Dale, you should have kept Karen in town. Pat and I can handle this thing. Well, it's a mighty good thing we came, Roy. When we rode past Mr. Boyle's herd just now, we surprised a masked rider. And he fired at us and then rode away. What was he up to? It was the strangest thing, Roy. He'd ride in and cut out a steer, and he'd reach down and grab it by the horns, and then let it go back into the bunch again. A masked rider? Did you recognize him or his mount, Karen? I'd never seen the horse before, Daddy, and we didn't get close to the rider. But the way he hunched his shoulders when he rode, it was George Allison. How about him? How about him? How about those great nuts? How about those great nuts? How about him? How about him? How about those great nuts? They are so good, good for you, too. The two minute energy works for you. So, how about him? How about him? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Yep, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? Take an old hand's advice, partners. Tomorrow when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellas and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. Roy and Pat, along with Dale Evans and Karen Boyle, set out to drive 200 head from the walking hour herd to the point where they'll be shipped east for beef. And meanwhile, at a ranch near the path of the cattle drive... George Allison, discharged hand from the walking R, is being dressed down. You're a blundering fool, Allison. It was your responsibility to get that steer before Boyle started his drive. I didn't think he'd start to drive without having an experienced hand in the place. It was too dark last night. I just couldn't locate that steer. You should have marked the steer in the first place. You know all those critters look alike? Well, I could find him in the daylight, all right. But Rogers was there practically as soon as the sun come up. 
The minute he was out of sight, the Boyle girl and that Dale Evans rode up. Well, they'll have to drive down the wash at the north end of the ranch, so we'll find the steer. Right? Oh, sure we will, Lambert. Sure we will. The only thing is that Rogers is making the drive for Boyle. I'm not afraid of Rogers, particularly when there's $100,000 at stake. I'll think of some way to handle him. Covering the ground fast, Roy. I think we'll make the railway spur before night. Don't go going this well, we will. You and Dale are a couple of top hands, Karen. We got these cattle moving along here as slick as bacon grease. Well, Pat and Nellie Bell and Bullet are certainly doing their part. Just watch how they keep those steers in the bun. You know, somehow I don't trust that Nellie Bell around cattle. If she started backfiring, the herd might be hard to handle. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about that. I just wonder what Allison was up to last night and this morning. Yeah. Uh, how's it going, Roy? <laughs> Boy, me and Bullet and Nellie Bell have got our side of the herd marching like soldiers. You're doing fine, Pat. You better hold up a minute while we figure out our next move. Quiet there, Bullet. Quiet, boy. Let's see. Lambert spreads over to the right. We can't cut across his property, of course, but if we drive down the voice that runs alongside, we'll save a couple of miles. Hey, that's a good idea, Roy. We'll have to kind of funnel the cattle in, though. Well... They won't jam in too tight, will they? No, there's plenty of room for them, if they don't get riled up. We'd better spread out, then, to be sure no stragglers get out of the bunch. Right. Pat, you and Bullet cover the left flank. Okay, Roy, but you mean me and Bullet and Nellie Bell, don't you? Oh, sure. You just see to it that Nellie Bell doesn't start firing her heavy artillery again. <laughs> now, Trigger and I'll squeeze them in gentle from the right flank, and you girls ride behind the herd and keep them moving. Right, old Roy. We'll see that they move down the wash real easy-like. How's your horse, Karen? He looks sort of done in. Oh, Rambler will be all right. I should have thought to get a fresh mount. He's had a hard 12 hours, but I guess the old boy can take it. Well, don't exert him any more than you have to. Buttermilk's fine, so if there's any hard riding to do, let Dale do it. Sure thing, Roy. Come on there, Rambler boy. We'll take care of everything, Roy. All right, Pat. You cut around to your position, and we'll head down the wash. Don't worry about a thing, Roy. Well, this is easy. Seems almost too easy, doesn't it, Trigger? Well, if we can get through the wash and pass Lambert's spread, we'll be in town before we know it. Who gave you permission to move your herd down this wash? Oh, I didn't know we needed permission. This wash is a public right-of-way. Where are you going with this herd? It doesn't belong to you. These steers carry Ed Boyle's walking auto brand. You're Roy Rogers, aren't you? Uh, sure I am, Mr. Lambert. We've met. I'm taking this bunch in for Boyle. And if you'll excuse me, we'll be on our way. Wait a minute, Rogers. I've been negotiating with Boyle to buy a few head. And I may as well pick them out now. I'm sorry, but this herd goes through like it is. Boyle's contract to deliver them. And I sort of gave my word to see that they got there. I'm on, Trigger. We'll move them along. You're wrong about that, Rogers. My man picked out a steer that I'm very anxious to have. We haven't taken delivery yet. I want to make sure that steer isn't in this drive. Allison, come here. Allison, eh? Yeah. Yeah, what is it, Lambert? Oh, hello there, Rogers. That particular steer we had in mind, Allison, uh, do you see him in that batch? Is that the steer you went to Boyle's to get last night? What do you mean? I wasn't anywhere near Boyle's last night. Of course he wasn't. I'll vouch for that. Well, how about it, Allison? Well, let's see now. Uh, yeah, I think that big one with the wild eye and the nicked ears is the critter we wanted. All right, make sure and we'll take him along. Uh, I can make sure when I get my hands on him. Lambert, he ought to know better than to sashay up to a crazy wild range steer like that. Hey, Allison, look out. Rogers, the steer's after him. Come on, Trigger, we've got some bulldogging to do. Go, Trigger. Get alongside of him, boy. Rogers! Rogers, save me! Now, Trigger, here I go. I'm glad you've got horns to hang on to, big boy. Now, we've got to stop you. Throw it, Rogers. Don't let him trample me. I'm trying, Allison. I'm trying. Hey, you were a tough customer, Steer. You must weigh better than a thousand pounds. Great work, Rogers. I could use a hand like you. No, thanks. You got me out of quite a spot there, Rogers. 
Maybe you two fellows will go about your business and let us get these cattle started again. Stand back now. I'm going to let this steer up. Easy now, boy. Take it easy. I still got hold of your horns. <clears throat> hey, you missed something. I still got your horn in my hand. Lambert, that's the one. All right, Rogers. Hand me that steel horn and don't ask any questions. Cover me, Mellison. Hand over that horn. Then reach for the sky, Rogers. This is a pretty valuable steer horn, isn't it? It isn't often you find one that's detachable and filled with diamonds. Move on, cowpoke. This is no squirt gun in your ribs. That's right, Lambert. Unlimber your shooting irons, too. I might take Allison's away from him. Fat chance, cowpoke. Of course, when you're facing the gun and you've got another one in your back, it makes it tough. You've got to move fast. Like this! Shoot, Allison! He's got my gun off! He's got mine, too. But I'll get him. No, you won't. Now off that horse, Lambert. Shoot, Allison! Shoot! You can both try shooting if you want to. The shots aren't going anywhere but straight up in the air. I'll try it if I can just wrench loose. Go ahead, empty your guns. You'll be easier to handle that. Now, if you've had enough, I'll take those guns. Rogers, look off! The herd! The herd, they've turned around. They're heading back up the wall. All right, scramble, both of you. That herd's stampeding. Trigger boy, over here, hurry! I'll be back for you two. Now go, Trigger. Cut in front of that herd. We've got to get across the path of the jeep. back toward the herd, Karen. We're dropping pretty far behind, though. I know, Dale, but Rambler's all in. I've got to walk him easy for a while. Well, we're doing all right. Buttermilk's rounded up all the stragglers so far. It looks like the herd stopped way up there. I can't see Roy or Pat. Can you? No. I get... What's that? Shots, Karen. Roy must be in trouble. Maybe I'd better ride on ahead. Maybe you... Dale! No! Look! The herd! The... Oh, they've turned around. They're stampeding. They're stampeding this way. Those gunshots started them. We've got to get out of here. If we can just reach that high ground. Come on, Buttermilk. Go on. Rambler, go, boy. Dale, help. Help, Rambler's down. Karen, get on your feet. Get Rambler up. I can't ride him anymore, Dale. He can't do it. Then jump up behind me. Hurry and leave him. Hurry. That's the girl. He's up. We'll make it. There, I'm on. Come on, Rambler. Oh, now, Buttermilk, you better handle this load, boy. The herd's gaining on you, Dale. I'll have you turn around and lose. No, no, you can't leave it to be swept up in that stampede. But we'll never make high ground here. We'll all be trampled. And now it's time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Be a good loser. Yes, Buckaroos, that's Roy's reminder for today. You know, even the best of cowboys can't always win at riding, roping, or wrangling. And Roy wants you to know that if you should lose sometime, that's the time to grin and say to yourself, well, I just got to practice some more and build up some more strength and energy and make sure that next time I'll win. And say, buckaroos, talking about strength and energy that you need to win in almost anything you do, the best way to get it is to eat good, nourishing food like Grape Nuts Flakes. Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those swell-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you in just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you'll like sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. They have a flavor that's multi-rich, makes them mighty good to eat. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Great Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. As Roy Rogers takes a drive of unruly steers toward market, he discovers why Allison and Lambert are so interested in the animals. For concealed in the hollow horn of one of them is a cache of stolen diamonds. And as Roy overpowers the criminals, their gunfire stampedes the herd. Maddened, they charge toward Dale and Karen Boyle, virtually helpless with an exhausted horse and a double load on buttermilk. Dale, they're gaining on us. We can't make it. We can't give up, Karen. Go, buttermilk. Oh, boy, boy, where are you? 
Roy and Traeger cross behind the plunging cattle and dash along the flank toward the spot where Pat is stationed. Faster, Traeger! Faster, boy! Roy! Over here! He's got to work fast! Oh, oh, and I'm here now. Roy? Hey, how can we stop that stampede? They're heading right toward Dale and Karen. If we can't stop them, we'll have to turn them aside. Is Nellie Bell ready? Nellie Bell's always ready, but how in the name... Never you... mind, just let me drive. Bullets, you see those two men across the wash? <coughs> All right, you and Trigger get over there and hold them. Hold them, you understand? <coughs> All right, get going. <coughs> now, Pat, it's up to Nellie Bell. <coughs> Roy, what happened? Who's going to start those critters stampede? Tell you later, Pat. Hey, how do you make this thing backfire? Backfire? Well, she backfires when she's nervous or uh, when she ain't getting a spark. All right, when I give you the word, switch the ignition on and off fast. Good enough, Roy. I'm with you. Gunfire started this herd. If we flank them close enough, backfire or turn them aside. Hey, I can see Dale and Karen. We gotta work fast. Go, Nellie Bell! Well, we're almost close enough. Almost close enough. The fire those steers are breathing is scorching my neck. Now, Pat, start working the switch. You bet. Hey, Roy, you're driving off a close to the herd. You have to turn them somehow. Hey, it's working. They're turning. Keep that switch going on and off. They're heading them off. They're running away from us. They're heading away from Dale and Karen. That's the important thing. Roy, you missed them. Dale and Karen are safe. Well, there wasn't much to spare either. Luckily, we started when we did. Luck we had Nellie Bell. There, there now, Nellie Bell. You can take it easy now. Oh, Roy. Pat. You turned that stampede just in the nick of time. Oh, we couldn't have made it, not without losing Rambler. And even then, oh, gosh, thanks, Roy. Hey, that hurt running itself out now. Think we'd better start rounding them up again, Roy? They're safe enough out there until they calm down. I've got Trigger and Bullet on a roundup, too. Let's all go see how they're making out. Roy, who are those men Trigger and Bullet are holding? Why, it's Allison and Mr. Lambert. Rogers, call these animals off, will you please? I don't know. You ready to do some talking? I'll talk, Rogers. Just get me out of this. All right. Bullet, trigger, that's enough. Uh, I've got them covered, Roy. Don't you worry about a thing. I won't. There's not much fight left in either of them. I'll sign a confession, Rogers. I hid the diamonds in the steer's horn, but Lambert stole them with me. It was his idea. If you'd marked the steer properly, Allison, this wouldn't have happened. There were diamonds hidden in the horn of one of my father's steers? Sure, Karen. That's why Allison kept hanging around your spread after he was fired. And that's why Lambert kept hiring men away from Mr. Boyle, so he couldn't start his drive until they'd found the loot. Now, that's about it. And that's about all for Allison and Lambert. The sheriff will be glad to see them. We still have to get the cattle to the shipping station, Roy. Do you think we'll make it? Well, with top hands like you and Dale and Pat, how can we miss? We've got top hands in the four-footed department, too. <laughs> Rambler will be all right by now, Kieran. Hey! Aren't you leaving someone out of all this talk about top hands? Now, Pat, you couldn't mean... Why, certainly. Nellie Bell. <laughs> you know, Pat, you've got something there. A mighty loud something. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us... Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Remember what Roy Rogers says, Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Roy's right, fellas and gals, as a cereal it's dandy with milk or cream. For snacks, it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Post Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. Nourishing puff tweet, candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Post Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.
Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Katie Lee, Charles Seal, Tyler McVeigh, and Pat McGeehan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. <laughs>